Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church of Hawthorne. I'm Pastor Kevin Bergeson. Wherever you're tuning in from, from Florida to the Midwest, all the way here to Southern California, we're so glad that you're here. It's another beautiful day here in the South Bay. We're so glad that you could be a part of what we're doing here. We hope that the worship service today inspires you in your trust in Jesus Christ and also that it would carry you with your hands and your hearts into serving into the world. So on behalf of the entire team helping to lead worship here today, from those running the sound to those singing, playing music, and everything in between, we're so glad that you're here today. And so we make our beginning today in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join us in our opening hymn? We take a few moments of honest confession. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We keep a moment of honest silence. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Church, hear this good news today. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I joyfully declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, you have called us, us Trinity, Trinity Lutheran, Lutheran Church, Church, to serve you, you and our, our neighbor, neighbor in, love. in love. Inspire our call to build a spiritual home for all through our loving words and deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. Now invite our friend Carol Wright to share some good news time. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Um, this week at Trinity, we heard a special speaker talk about the power of kindness, something Mrs. Davis talked about last week. She introduced it. Um, Nicole Phillips taught us there are three ways to think about kindness. Give it, receive it, or witness it. And um, earlier this week, I have to admit, 
I was having a little bit of a pity party. Do you ever have one of those? Um, it was my husband's birthday, and we normally um, go out for dinner to celebrate um, with a very special family to us. But um, with all this COVID stuff, um, I just knew we wouldn't be able to do that. So I was having my own personal private pity party. I missed hugging the ones I love so dearly. I just, I missed not being able to hug my grandkids. And I knew that we would not be able to do that. So I was having a pity party. Well, then the phone rang and we were invited to a loved one's house for dinner for a special celebration. As soon as we got to their backyard, I began to receive kindness. I, I barely had my chair open, and somebody brought me a bottle of water, and behind the mask, I could see this huge smile. Somebody else was wiping down the tables that we were going to use, and two others were working on other, other parts of the meal. Everyone was showing us kindness, and my husband got these beautiful homemade cards with encouraging messages that made him smile. We were served a delicious meal, better than any we ever got in a restaurant, and just beautiful. There were so many acts of kindness extended to us. Um, there were also these really encouraging conversations, um, things that I've been remembering and thinking about all week. I've been repeating those phrases that I heard at this special act of kindness. And you know what? All week, I've been thinking about Nicole Phillips and reading her book and, and the ways that i um, remembering that special day. And here's what's exciting. Instead of a pity party, I actually started giving kindness too. I was um, at Vaughn's and I was getting some, I like their cut vegetables because it saves me time. And so the whole um, shelf was empty. And right here, there was a lady and she was filling up the counter. And I thought, uh-oh, give kindness, like somebody gave it to you. So I took one that she'd put there, and I put it in my cart, and I turned to her. I, I took a deep breath. I was a little nervous, but I took a deep breath, and I said, hey, do you cut up these yummy vegetables? And she looked at me, yeah, it's a big job. And she was kind of grumpy. And I said, oh, I just wanted to tell you thank you, because they're so good, and we love having these in our refrigerator. And you know what that lady did? She stood up really tall, and she, she was kind of smiling. And I was so excited to be able to share that with her. And she even said, thank you. And she said, I'm going to thank the other people, too. So that kindness is going to be extended. And earlier this week, I got to do that other one, witness kindness. I saw a mom hand three envelopes with people's names on them in bright, bold letters to another mom. And I don't know what they said, but in my heart, I thought, I bet you those children are going to be so excited to open up those messages, that special act of kindness. And so all week, I've been thinking about it. And you know what's amazing? I have not had a single pity party since then. Isn't that cool? That's what mind, kindness does for us. Um, today, we're going to hear a, an important verse from 1 Peter. Serve one another with whatever gift you have received. Kindness is a willingness to share, to look for opportunities to share a blessing. What we can share the kindness, encourage kindness, give kindness, witness kindness. What a blessing. And so friends, that there, there really is a power to help us feel better when we are showing kindness or giving kindness. Um, and so this week, I want to encourage you to look for opportunities to give, receive, or witness kindness. So the next time you find yourself grumbling or complaining like my personal pity party, because you have to go clean up your room, or you don't get another cookie, or you have to go to bed before the end of the Dodger game, stop. And I want you to think of a kindness that you can give. And there are so many good ideas. You could hold the door open for someone. I did that later at another store. You could send someone a card, like our friends were doing. Smile. Clean up a mess that you did not make. Or offer to help with a task. Actually, in Nicole's book, there's 365 suggestions for kindness at the end of her book. Isn't that amazing? How creative can you and your family be? The amazing thing is, you'll discover, just like I did, that kindness makes us feel better. So give it a try this week, okay? 
you may be surprised. And that's the good news for today. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for this reminder of the importance of using our gifts to serve others, to be kind. And we just pray that you'd help us to be super creative this week and think of ways to give kindness, share kindness, receive kindness, to witness kindness, God. Just bless this South Bay with your kindness acts, Father. And then all God's children said, Amen. The scripture readings for the first three weeks in October are based on the vision and mission of Trinity Lutheran Church. These words of challenge and promise help illustrate what kind of church God is calling us to be in this new season of our ministry together. Our first lesson is from, the, is from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, Serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord your God, the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our second lesson is from Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 4 through 10. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trans trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God not the results of work, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, and wrapped a towel around him. He poured water into a basin and began to wash, to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was around him. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing now you do not know, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said, Then, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. He is clean all over, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and that was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments, he took his place at the table, and he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is him who sent him greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you know Lutheran Social Services? Have you heard of these people before? I hope you have because here in the United States, one in 70 people, I want to say that again, one in 70 people are helped by the good work of Lutheran social services here. It's incredible, and it's a part of who we are. We're connected to them. We are them, and they are us. And it's something to celebrate when we talk about what it means to be a church, a church that is serving. I'm also celebrating another wonderful week of ministry here with you. Remember what we're doing here together. We are building together a spiritual home for all, for all, a beacon of God's love and light in Hawthorne, the South Bay, and beyond. That's what we're about. And so we're looking at the qualities of Jesus that make us who we are, that shape what we do. So when we love like Jesus, we're building a spiritual home for all. When we grow like Jesus, rooted in the Word and in the sacraments and in deep relationships, we're building a spiritual home for all. And when we serve, when we serve, we're also building a spiritual home for all. But serving is tough, if I'm really honest. I don't really want to do it, right? I have all sorts of excuses about why I don't want to serve, but why it's difficult or tough or I just don't really want to do it. I mean, maybe you've even seen that old bumper sticker they used to say, right? Look busy. Jesus is coming. There's always this little bit of truth in the back of our head, right, that we feel like if we're not being busy, that we're not really being that helpful to God. Or we all know someone that will say, oh, I'll totally come and serve. I'm absolutely going to help you. And then when they do, afterwards, all you hear is how tired they are and how put out they've been and I've did everything to do it. We even have a word for that, right? What is the word for that? A martyr, right? Which is kind of a funny religious term that we even use for that. It's been a long week, I know for many of you. And so when we come to a sermon that's going to talk about serving, I can already hear how it feels in my heart. Another thing I have to do. And so friends, I just want you to remember something else. 
I want to put in front of you today a way to reset your life when you feel like you're just overwhelmed by everything, which is 2020 in a nutshell. <laughs> and it starts with Martin Luther's good word to us. Remember 500 years ago, he went to the Facebook of his day, which was the castle door of the church. And he put up there 95 issues that he wanted to talk to people about. Can we have a conversation about this? Can we change some things here? And when he did, well, everybody got a hold of them. And he found out there was lots of other folks who felt the same way about them. And I kept thinking that if you're making a list of 95 things that you want to you take issue with, probably number one is the reason why you started the list in the first place. And so what is the first thing that Luther says on that list of 95? Interesting. He says, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, repent, in Matthew 4, 17, he willed the entire life of believers to be one of repentance. Wait, what? The entire life of believers is to be about repentance? Now that word, repentance, it has some heavy freight behind it, right? We all think we know kind of what it means, and so we kind of push it around on our plate like a bad green bean. You know, you just don't really want it. You don't want to eat it. You don't want to touch it. It's like serving, right? Repentance is not something we want to do, to be, or to live into. But Luther's saying it's the scope of our entire life. Friends, Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead, Jesus has come into the world and into your life not to play gotcha not to play gotcha, to catch us not being busy doing things. Jesus has come into the world for you and for me to transform our lives because Jesus is after our hearts. And Jesus wants us to find our hearts inside the heart of God and for us to then live out our lives in the heart of God in a spiritual home, just like this one. We call it Trinity Lutheran Church. Jesus has come to transform your heart and my heart to receive all that God has for us, and that's the beginning, is the forgiveness of our sins. Guess what? Jesus doesn't want any martyrs. He doesn't want grumpy people walking around his church. No thanks. Jesus wants your heart. And when you start feeling that way, like I can start feeling that way, that's where repentance is a reset for our hearts. And that's why we need one another. But wait, repentance always sounds like it's something I need to do, which is why serving sermons make me itchy, because it's, what's the next thing I got to do? And I'm the one up here preaching for you. But we believe, and we teach, and we confess, and we forget, and we fumble, and we lose this good news, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is God's work to forgive. It is God's work to send Jesus into the world for you and me. It is God's work to transform our hearts by calling us through repentance back to him. I'm a Christian who happens to be a Lutheran because saved by grace through faith is not a nice slogan. It's God's lifeline in a world that says it's always got to be about you. It's God's lifeline during COVID. It's God's lifeline when our families struggle. And we need a lifeline when our spiritual home goes through spiritual struggles. Let the grace of God transform your hearts today in Jesus' name from wherever you are hearing this from. In John chapter 13, Jesus is saying farewell to his friends. And it says at the beginning there in verse 1 that it's the Passover, which is an important detail because that reminds us of the festival the celebration of God freeing the people Israel from slavery. Freeing them from slavery. And then it goes on to say, right, in verse 1, that 
Jesus loves them to the very end. Friends, whatever definition of serving you brought into this space today, that you're listening at home, I want Jesus to break it for you and remind you, just as it says here in verse 1, that God's love to the very end is always connected to God's freedom for all people. Love and freedom are always connected together. And that is the foundation for why we serve gratitude for the love and freedom that we have in Jesus Christ because your freedom to reimagine what serving is all about that's worth it in Jesus name that's worth it to God verse 4 Jesus gets up from the table and he ties a towel around himself notice Jesus does not say well Kevin it's time for you to go ahead go ahead you're first no Jesus always goes first he leads the way in loving. He leads the way in our life. He leads the way in our death. He leads the way to our new life in Jesus Christ each and every day. Towels. If there's one thing that you take away from the message today, it's towels. Do you have towels at home? Like we have towels at home. Do you even have a towel at home that um, you're not really supposed to use? Right? Do you have a towel in your cabinet that you're not supposed to use? Do you have a towel maybe like this one that maybe even still has the price tag attached to it? We do. We're not supposed to use this towel. Why? Why can't you use this towel? It's for the company, right? It's for something else. It's too important for too special of a thing. We're going to put this towel back over here. Thank you very much. You can use the old towels. That's right. The old towels. Listen to 1 Peter that Susan read for us today so well. This was chosen to support our value of serving in this church. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift you've received. We have been called as caretakers of God's grace. So what are we doing? Hoarding towels. Friends, the more we tell ourselves that we can't use these towels, the more we'll believe it. And pretty soon we won't even have a towel to be able to use. The more we look at serving that way and say, well, I can't do that, the more we talk ourselves out of things, the more we can't find people to help us do the things we think we got to do. And people who serve out of the kindness of their hearts or their duty to the church, it's not easy to get resentful. We can't use those towels. Well, why? Because they're special towels. We're saving them for a special day. Friends, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of good news. Today is the day of repentance where Jesus is connecting freedom and love and inviting you and me into serving. What are we waiting for? Let Jesus break open the cabinet that you have at home. The one right here in your heart today, too. Remember LSS, Lutheran Social Services? I got to go visit them down in San Pedro. And when I went down and visit them, oh man, they were happy to see me because they said, Trinity Hawthorne? <gasps> Guess who was here? The fearless group of hot college and high school age kids. They went there with Pastor Charlie. They called him Pastor Charles. Pastor Charles was here with them and Anne, and it was a great adventure that we got to visit. They, we are known because we serve. Don't ever forget that. That's why we're here. Every age of our lives, through daily repentance, daily receiving the gratitude of God's grace, we can serve. We can serve through our giving, through our praying, through coming on a Zoom call, through asking how you are, through getting involved with the trunk or treat event that we're doing with the school across the street. We don't have to do these things. We get to do these things in Jesus' name. If there's no joy in your serving, church, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> When we say that we are a church that's about serving, of giving of ourselves, 
We are simply trusting in that biblical promise that out of great love, Jesus has set us free from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And in that freedom, we can use any towel, even the good ones, for the sake of our neighbor. So friends, let's pull out the towels this week and let's get it. Thanks be to God for you and thanks be to God for this good news. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? Loving God, we simply ask you to inspire our hearts to return to you when we need to reset in our life. And we ask that through your Holy Spirit's work, she would call us, your church, into the world again this week. Simple things. It doesn't have to be complicated. But that might be good news for someone else, including us. For all of this, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join us in our next hymn?
We join with Christians around the world with these ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Loving and gracious God, we gather as your people, as Trinity Lutheran Church of Hawthorne. You have been faithful to our ministry in years past, and we ask that you lead us into your future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing over the community of Hawthorne and the South Bay, wildfires and hunger and broken hearts. Lord, we need your presence and love. We pray for police and fire departments, for members of the military and their families, and for those without a safe place to be tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the ministry of Trinity School and Child Care Center. We pray for each student. Inspire our care and connection with these families and their stories. Inspire our staff team and keep them healthy and safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, inspire our prayer life for a hurting world. We lift up the needs and names of those we know now in the quiet of our hearts. Place your healing hand on your church and lead us in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this day and your gracious care, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your gracious tithes and offerings that ensure our ministry at Trinity, that it is bold and strong. Gifts may be made online or mailed to the office. Let us pray. pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him praise It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we boldly pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time we just invite you to press pause and gather your communion elements and as you share it at home together, you simply extend the bread and the wine to one another and just say, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And may this be a meal for you to hear that good news. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and as a model, an example of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear this promise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Join us in our closing hymn.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church of Hawthorne. We hope that today that you're serving has been a reset and inspired to know that you can use whatever gift God has given you to make a difference in this world and to be foolish enough to have the hope that you can make a difference in this coming week. We're so glad that you're able to join us for worship today. A few quick brief announcements. One is to let you know that we are doing a drive through trunk or treat event with our school. We'd love for not only for you to come be a part of that, but also to give us a hand. There's some details on the website that can explain a little bit more, um, but we would love your help in passing out candy in a safe, socially distant way. And speaking of safe and socially distant ways, we are exploring outdoor worship in between the sanctuary and the AMC, um, possibly starting this coming week. It'll be a soft start and then a couple as we kind of learn how to best do that together. So be watching your email, be watching the website and Facebook for more details of that begins to unfold as we can do that in a safe way together. God bless your week and we're so grateful for all the volunteers that made today's worship service possible from the musicians to those running the sound. Thank you for all of your help and support for this church. And now may you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week.